Welcome to the Fuel Podcast, where we explore the foundations under extraordinary lives. The Fuel Podcast is sponsored by the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage Advisors. NMLS ID 106583. If you're looking to purchase or refinance your mortgage, make the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage your first choice. And now, here is your host, Chris Schwartz. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Schwartz, your host of Fuel, and we are here today with our guest, Tony Saloom. Tony, how are you? Good, Chris. How are you? Good. And Tony is a community activist. He is the founder of Live Love Media. Mm -hmm. He is a physicist Mm -hmm. and a published physicist at that. He was formerly the chair of the physics department at Widener University. He is also a proud father of two beautiful little girls and husband to his wife, Lean. And in his spare time, <laughs> he runs a seven-person real estate team. But I kid, uh, that's you know what you do for your profession. And I say all that because, wow, that is a lot. And you know we very rarely have somebody come on with such a diverse... Uh, introduction. So, welcome, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Um, Thank you. So, uh, w- we're here today, Tony, and uh, Tony and I go back a, a little bit. We met uh, um, probably four or five years ago, uh, maybe seven. Yeah, I don't probably, know. Yes. Probably yeah, seven. Yeah. It's it's more, a little more, blurry, yeah. and it's <laughs> awfully cold here in the fuel <laughs> studios. Tony and I are, are trying to warm up here, yeah. um, but honestly, um, you know, o- outside of our our business relationship, Tony is a you know, I say that tongue in cheek on your, you know, spare time, but really full time. Tony runs a uh, successful real estate team at Compass, mm-hmm. and we do a lot of work together w- through our business. But outside of that, we uh, have really developed a great friendship. So it's an honor to have you yeah, here on the you. show today. Yeah, thank you, Chris. For the record, we did not meet through business. We met through Rotary. Mm-hmm. This is how we met. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we were introduced, but we yep. were both, retor- you know, we became Rotarians, and the business followed later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, we, we definitely uh, yeah. had a long, a good run in the, the Rotary Club of Media. We'll give them a shout out. Yeah. They do great yeah. things in the community, and uh, Tony and I were a part of that for a long time. Tony's still a member. And uh, so, Tony, w- what we do here on Fuel is, you know, we, you have, you know, like I said, a very diverse background, uh, so many things. I, I don't think I've ever, um, you know, used the word physicist and uh, realtor in the same context. So um, you've got a pretty unique story and, uh, you know, interesting journey. So I just want to talk about some things that, you know, have kind of brought you to where you are in your life, because as we said, you were the, you were the chair, you were the head of the physics department at Widener, and um, now you're running a highly successful real estate team of, you know, seven people. So uh, what, you know, what's your fuel, man? What, what <laughs> we want to hear your fuel story. So how, how'd you end up here? And is there anything in your life that sticks out that kind of, um, you know, really drives you? Yeah, no, thank you, Chris. Uh, if you want to get to the fuel part, that's uh, obviously pretty um, deep and it goes, um, it goes honestly. The fuel part it goes way, way back. It's, um, you know, you're, you're mentioning me as being professor and chair department, but my fuel is, is uh, deeper than that. It's, uh, it starts really in my childhood. And really, thank you for the introduction. The first few things you said uh, that about me being a community advocate in a way, th- that is my fuel. I uh, just, who I am, uh, you know, I, I tell people, I say, you know, I don't, I don't see life anything outside of simply something that I share with other people. So the community is really what helps me make sense out of out of life and what drives me to live this life, wake up every day and just uh, kind of push the envelope. I, so that that really comes from my childhood. And, um, you know, I, I grew up overseas. I grew up in Lebanon. And um, everything we're going to talk about today, it could be me being a professor, me being a founder, co-founder, really. It's Lean. Uh, my wife is a you know, co-founder of uh, Live Love Media. 
me being founder of Live Love Media, uh, our team being called the Affinity Team, and Affinity is because what brings us together. All of this is the end result of something that I experienced growing up. And not to... Growing up in, in Lebanon. In Lebanon. Not, yeah, not to get in details, which we can, but to just say... The way the way I think about it now, look back at my childhood, um, I had, you know, life did throw a lot of punches at me. I mean, I grew up in a civil war. Uh, maybe some people may not want to call it civil, but let's say I grew up in the middle of a brutal war that was happening among the people of the country. And I was just happened to be living right next to the one of the main bases. So I've seen the ugliest side of war. Mm-hmm. And... I think Tony, you and I have had some conversations yeah. uh, in the past, and I think you know, in one of our conversations, you had mentioned a tank actually oh, gotcha. pulling up and parking <laughs> behind your house. Yeah, yeah, my the tank that used to use my house as a shelter. Yeah, yeah, like it would pull out, shoot, then shelter behind my house. No, I mean, listen, we we can get into that, sure, but sure. I grew I up. I just want to paint the picture I, for you know. Yeah, some of the, I mean, those of us, you know, those people that yeah, are yeah. listening. I mean, this yeah. is like. Heart of it. Yeah, I mean, I woke up many times with missiles falling on my house, around the house. I mean, and you become an expert. Like, I became good at, from the whistling of the missile flying in, I know if it's going to hit us or not. So it's unfortunate. It's not something I'm proud of. But the point is, I grew up in such an ugly environment. And on top of it, I lost my dad at the age of nine. And that really put a lot of strain on our family. So just to mention those two things, between the war and not having my dad around and, you know, uh, with financial challenges, I look back at my childhood and I tell people, ironically, I really had a very rich childhood, rich not financially. And when I look back, what I realize what was beautiful about my childhood is the community. I tell people, you know, I lost a dad. I somehow had 50 dads in the community. It, it just, I grew up in a community where everybody knew everyone's business. And I don't think I would be the person I am today, who I'm very proud of, very happy of who I am today, if I didn't belong to such a tight community. Hmm. And today, everything I do in my life, it's me and my wife, Lean. Everything we do is based on that. Everything we do is how can we raise our children we have two young daughters. How can we raise our children to be part of a connected community where people not only like each other on social media, not only show their good, the good things happening, but actually know the pain of each other, know the struggles, and be there for each other. This is my fuel. Wow. Ah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a lot of fuel. I mean, yeah. that is, and so as you, yeah. as you, as you think about that, because your your community there, you know, in Lebanon, it, it looked much different, I'm sure, than than your community here mm. in the states. And mm. you know, I don't know if we want to say mm. where Tony lives, but you know, he li- li- <laughs> lives in, in the area. And uh, yeah. you know, uh, how does that? How are you able to connect and still have that sense of community in? in such a different environment Mm -hmm. first i mean chris i want to be clear the environment the society the community we live in today is very different from what i grew up and that honestly very little has to do with the location like the country i think simply life has changed Uh, the community even back home has changed a little bit so i think life has changed in general Connections have changed. I mean, social media didn't exist when you and I were growing up. Right. And I think, you know, social media has an effect of how people interact now. Uh, it became a little bit more, it became a little shallower than before because people sure, tend yeah, to yeah. like each other's posts, but some relationship, uh, yeah, yeah. relationships, <laughs> you know, end there. So, um, so things have changed. To your question, yes, we live in a community society today very different than what I grew up uh, experiencing, but that's mainly has to do with simply society has evolved. It's not about the country. Um, So yeah, how this today compares. um, You know, my favorite experiences, I knew about it, but I experienced it big time last year. Um, So again, we established Live Love Media, we can talk about it. And that's, Live Love Media came from exactly what we just talked about. 
Lena and I said, you know what? We live in the media area, greater media area. We live in the, we belong to the greater Philadelphia area, but specifically the media area. And we want to be vibrant members of the community. We want to be members who help empower the community. So we established Live Love Media for many goals. And one of them is to bring out the good things that are happening in the community, the things and the things that nobody wants to talk about, even challenges. And um, <clears throat> what's interesting is this past winter, we decided to start a dining series. We called it Dining by Affinity, which is, listen, we all live here. Let's bring 10, 12 people who don't know each other every week, uh, well, actually, which started once a month, once a month, and have them meet each other. Every time we did it, we were successfully, you know, be able, we were able to bring 10, 12 people together. The experience was exactly what I've, we've been dreaming for. People who interacted on Facebook probably, but when they met around that table and we in a kind of good questions, force everybody to share their life experience. The outcome was magical. Like people were leaving upset that it was a one-time thing. Nice. The, everybody was leaving. It's like, what's next? It was like, we, it, you know what's funny? We were many times short of people, so I ended up calling friends. It's like, hey, can you please help me? Because I need like 10 people. Yes. And what's unfortunate is I feel I met my friends at those dinners. Wow. The stories they shared is like, you've been my friends for two, three years. I did not know you grew up in that environment that you just explained. So it's unfortunate that many of us know each other, but really we don't. So, but unfortunately, back to your question of where we live today, this, you know, the community we're in today and the society, it was so difficult to bring 10, 12 people together and say, listen, we're going to have dinner together. You don't know people around the table and we're going to get to know each other. And many people would say, this is awesome, but I don't know if I can do it. Like, it was very difficult. And, on, hesitation, like, and, honest, and yeah, and honestly, we stopped it. Like it was, it was taking so much effort. It was distracting me out. from everything else to simply bring 10, 12 people together once a month. It was a lot of effort, a lot. Wow. So, so I mean, in one incident, I reached out to somebody who's so active on Facebook, on social media in general, in the community. And I said, hey, I see that you're very active, so I assume you would love something like this. And their answer was, uh, actually, I'm very uncomfortable meeting people. So the point is, like, we see all of this interaction on social media, but it is so superficial. I genuinely believe, I'm speaking for myself, I think everyone has their own way of living. Speaking for myself, that doesn't do it for me. I need something deeper that connects me with others. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure many of us have heard, you know, or made the reference that social media has almost made us less social, mm. uh, you know, as a society. It's, uh, you know, many times where, you know, you, you're friends with these people online and, you know, you comment and whatever. And then you, you, you see them in a store and you're like, oh, I hope they don't see me. I'm just going to keep yeah. on walking. But it's like, yeah. why do we, you know, so. Uh, so the community is is really what what fuels you. It's it's hundred percent. It's the first and the last. Yeah. Nice. And and what are you doing now with uh, Live Love Media? Mm -hmm. And uh, again, talking about the challenges of people's schedules and social media mm -hmm. and just the the society that the evolution of society yeah. and where we are. Yeah. Um, is it? Let's talk about a little bit. I guess what Live Love Media is doing mm -hmm. and and trying to you know help bridge that gap. Yeah, happy to talk about Live Love Media and what I want to say about Live Love Media applies to everything in my life. So if anyone who's listening to us today, they know this is who I am in any community, in my geographic community, in my demographic community. You know, through church, this is who we are. This you know as a, as a family, this is who I am as a person. So I'll tell you how. The you know Live Love Media was born, which explains what we're doing today and what we're you know, what we're trying to do. So I was you know I've been part of Rotary Club and other local volunteering groups, and I realized that groups like the Rotary, 
and many others, local to media or any area, anywhere you live. You live in Phoenixville, you live in Philly, anywhere you live, you have, there are local groups that truly are making the difference in everyone's life and in the community. They may not affecting your uh, affecting your fa your life directly, but the fact that they're empowering the community, they are affecting your life. And your community is beautiful. Your community is strong because of those groups. Unfortunately, talking about those nonprofits is not a topic of interest to social media. It's not uh, sexy. It's not controversial. What really gains traction naturally, and I'm not blaming anyone, I blame myself, I'm also drawn to controversy. What gains traction naturally is controversy. So what I started to realize, like, hold on. The clubs I, you know, these groups I belong to and the other groups I know about, they're, make, they're doing so many great things nobody knows about. Okay. Not only nobody knows about, if they post on the main local social media pages, they may get a couple of comments. But then somebody posts about chasing a fox in the area, you get yeah, 200 comments. Somebody posts about like a restaurant in a, in a, in a, a lawsuit with another restaurant, you get hundreds of comments. But generally, truly, the groups and the people and the volunteers, the, the folks who have sacrificed from their life to empower their community, you cannot get their message out. Thus, Live Love Media was born. Live Love, Me Live Love Media is mission is to put the word out for the groups, the organizations, the nonprofits, and the topics that people don't want to talk about. We recently interviewed someone local who's uh, has you know who's a mental health advocate. They have their own personal bipolar exp you know struggles, and they've came you know they have fantastic local groups to support others who you know suffer through mental sure. health and other issues. You know, that's stuff to push on the local social media pages. We interviewed the person, we pushed their, you know, we published their video, we pushed it. I'm very proud to say we had 4,000 views, over 4,000 views of this video. Nice. And we had many people click on the links of those groups. Here's the thing, Chris. Out of that, if one person who needs help, who struggles with mental health, reach out to those groups and ends up getting help and becomes healthier and probably not end up risking their life. You've done your job. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond done my job. I'm, I'm, I, this is the life I wanna you live. Want like this is, this is the stronger community we want. So this is Live Love Media. This is who we are everywhere, not only locally in the media area, but in the greater Philadelphia area and within our even demographic communities, as I said, through our church, is to really empower and help the things that make a difference, truly make a difference, not the shiny things that get traction simply because they're controversial. Yeah. Nice. And, you know, to as you said, in, in all areas of your life, you, you kind of have that, that common thread. And, mm -hmm. well, you know, with that, you know, you do have a full-time, you know, very demanding career as yeah. uh, a real estate agent. And, you know, the, the name yeah. of your team is... Affinity. Affinity. And, yeah, Affinity um, Real Estate Team. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you know, it's really great how you truly connect everything that you do. It's not just, okay, well, uh, here's my, my business over here, and we're going to come up with this, you know, cool name that, you know, flashy, sexy name. Um, you know, it, it's really like who you are and who um, the people on your team are. I mean, I'm sure mm -hmm. as, as you, you know, just just knowing you and, and the people on your team, I mean, not anybody <laughs> can uh, can yeah. become a part of this team. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you, ha yeah. you have to align with the values. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I mean, Chris, uh, it's uh, funny you bring this up. We had a meeting today, a team meeting. I just came from our team meeting and. We are in a search, or an active search to add a member to our team, and the team asked me, how is that going? And I was like, we have like a candidate? Like, we don't have 10. And, and anyone who wants to be part of our team has to be community-oriented. They will not do well, they will not enjoy, they will not survive, they will not grow on our team if they're not community-oriented. 
you have to be somebody who's all about their friends and family and their community. This is who we are. Again, I generally want to repeat, I'm not saying this is the right way. Everything else is not. This is our way. Sure. This yeah, is this, this is, is what works for me. What works for you? This is what works for me and Lean, my wife. This is what works for our team. And when we say our team is one family, it's not bluffing. It is true. I sleep, wake up thinking of how can I empower our team members every day and how can our team be do like truly be solution driven, solve problems for our friends and family in, in real estate, through real estate. So we serve as a team, we serve our friends and family through real estate, we serve our community through real estate. Live Love Media is a is is powered by our real estate business. So uh, this is why it's part of our website. Uh, I mean Live Love Media, I'm going to be straight honest, uh, <laughs> requires a lot of resources. <laughs> <laughs> And it gets into those uh, you know, non-profit things. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's, it requires a lot of uh, resources. And our real estate business uh, funds, supports uh, Live Love Media. And same applies for everyone on our team. If you're not community-oriented, if you're not all about your friends and family and how can you help them do better in their life through real estate, then we're not a right match. Uh, right match. So, um, yeah. That's uh, that's that's who we are. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, that I mean, Chris, you, this brings me to something that's uh, on this point. You know, once somebody brought to my attention uh, the book called um, Total Leadership. What's funny is we uh, we uh, read it. I read it, and it's funny that I realized, like, wow, I, I'm very lucky that my life kind of fits this model, which is everything in your life from like the idea, a lot of people, you know, think that your career, your family, your community must be like are two separate parts and you each has its part, you know, like you focus sure. on this from nine to five, focus on your family from five to eight, whatever. And this book argues that it shouldn't be the case. It should be all one. And I'm very lucky that my life, my family, my community, my business, my career, everything is one. It's all it's all one unit. Nice. And um, I, I think we really didn't, you know, get a chance to touch on it, but we have, you also have, uh, you know, published uh, <laughs> <laughs> books and yeah. studies. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, you just just real quick, I mean, let's just talk about. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, because uh, we, we've talked about quantum. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, my, my head immediately explodes. So yeah. how do you connect all that with, with quantum and, and mm. being a physicist? Yeah, it's all connected. I, um, so I, again, I was, I got, I came here to the Philadelphia area for my PhD in physics. I went to Drexel, got my PhD from Drexel, became professor at Widener, tenured, became the chair of the department at Widener. And my field of optic uh, of research was quantum optics. So quantum is, is at the heart of my research. And as you said, I'm internationally, nationally published in the field. Uh, and when I taught quantum, to answer your question, I always added a life twist to it. So when I was, you know, when I taught quest, uh, quantum in the classroom, I always used those counterintuitive concepts to explain life. And I'm you know, happy to say right now, and honestly, I've been developing uh, a series of talks. I've get, you know given a lot of talks at universities, schools, local groups. I call them I call them quantum food for thought. It's not live anywhere, so if you look <laughs> it up online, you're not going to find anything. But quantum food for thought, where I take quantum concepts and apply it to everyday life, and um, you know. Um, there are like there are some concepts. Some of them, you know, for example, Chris, you know, uh, interference, uncertainties, those things in quantum that honestly I think of every day in my life. Um, you know, uh, you and I have met, interacted, and for somehow our interference, our interaction has been constructive. Uh, and this is how it is on our team. On our team, we have a slogan. We call it, uh, which is a quantum slogan. It's one plus one equals four. Because quantum teaches us that if two units are perfectly coherent, the outcome is quadruple. Like one unit and another unit, the outcome is not two. The outcome is four if they are well coherent. Unfortunately, if they are opposite in terms of coherence, then one plus one is zero. Mm. So on our team, in my life, I try my best to keep it one plus one equals four. 
I love it. <laughs> so. Nice. All yeah. right. Well, well, Tony, thanks yeah. so much yeah. for you know for sharing all all that. And um, now we're gonna hit you with a little rapid fire. Okay. So um, it's real real simple. Basically, you're stuck on an island. And we're going to ask you three questions. Okay. That's not starting well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, the first one, and this can be anyone, this is going to be outside of your friends and family because we would all, of course, take our loved ones. Um, who would you take with you? And, and it can be a celebrity. It could be somebody fun. It could be somebody, anyone. Who would you take if you could, uh, and your friends and family are obviously, you yeah. know, we know they would be there. I want to repeat this question is against everything I believe in. <laughs> because I, want, I want the more people around me, the community, yeah. and you're putting me on an island. So you're yeah. torturing me. You're absolutely yeah, torturing well, me here. This is um, <laughs> you know, you said not I family. I, first, I, I'm going to say I wish I can have a conversation with my dad. You know, I lost my dad at the age of nine. I wish he can be with me. I have a lot to ask him. Uh, but to respect your question... You're not allowing family. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I love people who are bigger in life, have ideas bigger than life, and they are well-traveled, have experienced all cultures. And, you know, I'm going to stick with my own name, Tony, and go with Tony Robbins. I would love to, uh, <laughs> I would love to have a guy, uh, you yeah. know, have a good conversations. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. So we're yeah. taking Tony Robbins. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and number two, uh, what's a book that you, that you've read that's had an impact on your life that you want yeah. to share with our listeners that they could maybe get some insight out of? Uh, it goes against the uh, my favorite book <laughs> goes against the uh, the island idea. Okay, um, so my I'm favorite the island. <laughs> the book that changed my life. Many have one that changed my life a few years ago is um, how to win friends and influence people. Okay. Um, it made a huge, subtle, powerful impact on my on my life. Nice, awesome. And the last one's a fun one. What food? What food do yeah. you have to have? What are you taking with you? I'm 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 an easy eater. I'll eat anything, but uh, I won't mind grabbing anything out of that water and eating it. Uh, I grew up. I grew up just eating seafood at the beach and nice. I will happily do that. Yeah, nice. that's, yeah. Awesome. Well, Tony, th thanks again. Um, if people want to connect with you, if they want to find out more about live love media, about your, your real estate team, yeah. uh, you know, anything that you're doing, how do we find you? Where do we connect? Yeah. The affinity is affinity. Uh, our uh, website or uh, live love media.com and they'll find us there. And uh, yeah, it's uh, happy to connect. Uh, just keep in mind that, the more connections I have with people, the happier I am. So bring them on. Let's 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 be better connected and be prepared because I want to share my pain, share my struggles, my happies, uh, happy moments, and all of it, and hear yours as well. I that's 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 how I want to live. Awesome. Well, you guys heard it. Reach out to him and yeah. connect. So. On that note, I just want to thank you for listening to the show today. If you got something out of this, do me a favor. Go ahead and give us a five-star rating there on iTunes. Share it with your friends and family. And we're out.